This is behind the counter at a Japanese style Chinese restaurant. So this morning we're all the way in Tokyo's Asakusa area and we are going back five generations at this father and son Chinese restaurant. I'm so excited to take you guys behind the counter for this one so let's just get this one started. Asahi is a Japanese style Chinese restaurant with a rich history spanning over a hundred years. Originally from the Nihonbashi area, the shop tragically burnt down during the war, but was later rebuilt here in one of Asakusa's hidden back streets, just behind the iconic Sensoji temple. And now this hidden gem is run by a father and son duo serving lines of locals each and every day. Good morning! Nice. He's the owner, Uekisan, and usually the first one to come in. It's so hot today, isn't it? Apparently, he took over the shop from his father when he was 29 years old, making him the fourth generation owner in his family. But he actually started his career at the age of 16, studying under his grandfather's friend at a traditional Japanese cuisine restaurant in Shimane Prefecture, after which he worked in other industries to gain more life experience before settling back down here. The first thing he does in the morning is to take care of the desalinated menma, bamboo shoots used in their ramen. So how old is this restaurant again? Damn, it goes way back. How long have you been working here then? That's amazing. So you live here? You must know everyone then. Oh, when's the festival? Ah, that's a famous one. Good morning. Oh, the chicken delivery is here. Hello. <laughs> They're so close. Having a generational business like this, the family's developed many strong relationships with vendors going as far back as his great grandfather. Another delivery. This time it's the noodles. Oh, really? So tell me something about your noodles. Damn, those are some fresh noodles. Thank you. By the way, do you ever take vacations? Oh, what do you usually do? Oh, yeah? Nice, what's your poison? No beer? How much can you drink? Holy highballs! No cap! So do you travel with your wife? Huh, okay. Why don't you go with your friends? Hey, I can take the weekdays off. <laughs> oh, he's already taking a break. Apparently, there's not a great deal of tasks in the morning, aside from preparing the soup, which requires several hours to cook. Wow, he drinks three cups of coffee. <laughs> Take a coffee break. By the way, how old are you? <laughs> Damn, you look way younger. <laughs> During this downtime, he works on the shop's accounting and other desk related tasks, as it's also his responsibility as the business owner to keep all the paperwork in order. More deliveries. Does it come every day? <laughs> Now that the pork bones and pork feet have been delivered, he adds them to the chicken-based soup, which will ultimately be used for the shop's signature ramen dishes. After boiling for a while, he blends the original batch with today's, which is a cooking method in Japan known as sugikashi. It's supposed to deepen the soup's flavor and why it's commonly practiced among many ramen shops. Now, he quickly cleans the workplace to ensure the utmost cleanliness, despite his son thoroughly cleaning the kitchen the night before. So why the name Asahi? What do you mean? Ah, yeah, that makes sense. 
And wow, the pork looks so fresh. The shop uses five kilograms of pork a day to make their special chashu, sourcing it from their trusted wholesaler who provides them with only fresh domestic cuts, which are never frozen. Do you know why your great grandparents chose Chinese food for their business? I see. So, what's the difference between Chinese food in Japan and China? Ah, okay. He says that Japanese style Chinese is more casual and has less menu items compared to authentic Chinese food. Japanese style Chinese restaurants like Asahi are known in Japan as Machi Chuka, directly translated town in Chinese. Its origins trace back to the 1600s when it arrived in Japan's Nagasaki area during the Edo period, but through time underwent a gradual evolution to suit Japanese tastes, and even developing original dishes like chukadon and shrimp mayonnaise, one of my favorites. Now he removes the pork used for their chashu but leaves the chicken bones in the soup stock throughout the day which creates a progressively rich flavor as the day goes on. Regulars are aware of this and enjoy visiting at specific times depending on their preferred taste for that day. Oh, his son is here. Good morning. Nice to meet you. How long have you been working here? Oh, what did you do before this? Nice! Surprisingly, Ueki san was contemplating closing down the business when he retired, but his son told him that he wanted to carry on his family's tradition, which secretly made him smile. After all, the shop is where he grew up and it's been a part of his life since he was born. Not only that, the neighbors and his friends who have regularly visited throughout his lifetime makes this place truly the home he's only ever known. And now he even feels more grateful that the tradition and flavors his ancestors built will continue on for another generation. What are you singing? Life is music. Haha, <laughs> sweet. That pen seems too small. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Have you worked here for a while? Yeah, Cool, how'd you find this job? <laughs> and what do you do when you're off? <laughs> the owner loves drinking too, right? So who can drink more? So how's it working here? Damn, that would be trouble for me. <laughs> so this shop is located more specifically in the Ura Asakusa neighborhood, one of Tokyo's old school geisha districts dating back to the Edo period. Although these days it's more rare to see a geisha, but back then many of their customers would stop by here for a late night ramen. Hey, so before we continue on, I want to tell you guys about the awesome people at Booksuit who also sponsor this video. I know that many of you have already subscribed, which is awesome, but for those of you who don't know, they provide a premium experience of Japanese snacks, candies, and tea pairings delivered to your front door. They work with family businesses all over Japan and deliver a new theme of authentic treats each and every month. First time users will get a Seasons of Japan box, and after that, you'll get a theme box like this one. This month's theme is Luminous Tokyo with its electrifying atmosphere and bustling streets. Streets. So this box is curated with a city's dazzling snacks. My favorite this month is a Tokyo chocolate waffle sandwich cookie, which you can try for yourself. So get $15 off your own authentic Japanese subscription snack box from Boksu by using my code Paolo and link in the description. <laughs> Now he finishes up the soup for Hiyashi Chuka, cold style noodles popular in Japan. Oh, you're gonna let me taste it? That's good. 
It's his routine to taste today's soup and compare it with yesterday's, making sure that today's soup tastes exactly the same. As an owner of a restaurant that's been successful for over a century now, he believes it's critical to stay true to the original recipe and taste created by his ancestors. Also mentioning that even the same recipe can taste differently, so he takes extra care to maintain their shop's signature flavors. Wow, there's already people waiting! At 11.30, the restaurant is finally in business. I guess the first order was nida soba, ramen with Chinese chives, and dandan men. Usually the son is responsible for stir frying, while the wiki son takes care of the noodles and cutting. And the server adds a garnish and sides, then carries the dishes to the tables. So Machichuka restaurants in Japan are known for their comforting taste as well as their welcoming atmosphere, friendly owners, and swift service, all at a reasonable price. To sum it up, an everyday food and an everyday type of place. And Oweki Sen Shop is no exception and why it's loved by so many. <laughs> And that's their top seller, Shoga Ramen, a delectable ramen crowned with a flavorful ginger topping. Interestingly, it's one of their many new items Oweki san added to the menu himself. Initially, he focused on faithfully recreating his family's original recipes, but when he traveled to Southeast Asia, exotic foods inspired him to be more creative. And now he explores outside of traditionally known machi chuka dishes, serving both typical dishes and ones he created himself. He also says that over time, he realized that it's important to loosen up a little bit in order to continue on his family's legacy. Excuse me, can I bother you? So do you come here often? For a long time now? Like how long? Since you were a baby? Wow! So what's your recommendation then? What about the winter? Thanks. Excuse me, do you come here often? Oh, okay. What's your recommendation? Cool. How long have you been coming here? Jeez, really? Well, thank you. That's truly amazing. And who knows, imagine 20 years from now, in this very same seat, one of Oweki san's friends will be saying the same thing about him, while his son and maybe grandson are working together in the kitchen, continuing on the legacy. So that's another one in the books. If you want to visit this place yourself, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description. Okay, so we're gonna end it here. That is behind the counter at a Japanese style Chinese restaurant. If you guys like this video, help me out and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos like this or anything related to Japan, hit that subscribe button and the bell button. I'll catch you guys in the next one.